Okay. I just got something in the mail and I'm really excited to show it off. My buddy Sam Zhao over at Kakapopo TCG. You may remember them for their endless dice Kickstarter, the paintable metal dice. Well, they have something new called the Lord of the Dice, one cube to rule them all. It's a full set of seven RPG dice in a single D6 form and it spins for freaking ever. Right off the bat, when I pulled it out of the mail, I was impressed by the size. I thought it was gonna be like an inch or two wide, but no, it is large and in charge. And because it's metal, it is also freaking heavy. It's got six different designs designs depending on the face of the d6, a dragon on one side, a D&D style beholder on another, an undead worm which kind of looks like a Chinese zodiac dragon, a minotaur, a phoenix, and a kraken. There are two Celtic knot style designs on opposite corners of the d6 that tell you what number you roll on, or in this case spin on, because that's how you roll this die. You spin the corresponding face, stop the spinning, and that's the number that you land on. The design is always the same for the corresponding dice face. For example, a dragon will always be a d20, a kraken will be a d8, and a phoenix will be a d4. They are addictively smooth to spin. It's like a fidget spinner dice desk toy all in one, and they sent me so much other stuff that I want to show off. Firstly, they sent off a Gen 2 and Gen 1 prototype for these things, and apparently Sam's son really did a number on this one by stepping on the Gen 2 prototype, and now the d20 spinner doesn't work. These are are solid and heavy metal. I really pound into these later and they still work, so his son must have really stepped on this. It is gorgeous, amazingly bright and shiny gold, but it's far more readable than the first one, and I'll show you my reaction. Okay. <laughs> I know that he says this Gen 1 prototype is not readable, and he's right. <laughs> but this is so gold and so cool. I love this so much. So yeah, you can imagine I was extremely pleased to find out that you can get these things inked or uninked because I want more solid blocks of gold on my desk. I just don't have enough gold things or gold dice. <laughs> Check out my last video. I will say I prefer the Gen 1 prototypes darker marker. Hey, I'm a poet and I didn't even realize that I was one, but they definitely made a good call on changing up the numbering system. The right one or the Gen 2 onward is far easier to read inked or uninked because I have the bronze one uninked and the gun metal one inked. I just thought it was cool to be able to show the evolution of their designs. One thing you might notice is that the faces kind of are weighted so that it falls further towards one end. That's not really a big deal because you're supposed to lay whatever face you're going to spin on flat so it's not going to matter because you're supposed to stop it with your finger. Because if you don't, it will go on for ever. I did not lie about going on forever earlier. This is at 2000% speed. It literally took a minute and a half for this thing to stop. So you're definitely going to want to stop it with your finger. As usual, I'm going to test the durability of these things. There were some tiny scratches on this from hitting one against the other, but I think that's far less important than on normal dice. You're not supposed to have multiple of these things, and honestly, you're not even really supposed to roll them. They're supposed to lay on the table flat and spin them. So as far as durability, I wouldn't be concerned. I really laid into one of these dice from the other one, and they still work just fine. I've hit them on multiple surfaces, dropped them from a bunch of different heights, and they work just fine. So as far as durability is concerned, I wouldn't be concerned. I also couldn't pry these spinning faces off with my fingernail, so unless you're going to use a hammer and chisel, I really don't think you're going to get these out, and if you do do that, you probably wanted them out anyway. But we have some other things in the Kickstarter to show off, though I do think the Lord of the Dice is the star of the show. They do have some really awesome awesome metal dice boxes. There are six different box designs in five different colors, all corresponding to the different monsters, and they are heavy. All the different monsters are the same ones that are on the face, and it has this cool little removable divider so you can fit normal sized dice in there, but my favorite thing is no matter what orientation you put the lid on, it will go back on just fine. More dice boxes need to do that. It is awesome. I can also show you some of the designs up close really well because these are the same ones that are on the Lord of the Dice face, but just bigger. Also, the dividers are the same material as whatever the outside is. You can see the nice Kakapopo TCG logo in there. It looks really nice all zoomed in. And man, all these designs are just fantastic. The Phoenix actually looks the best on the box, though it's my least favorite monster design on the actual D6 itself. I like them all and I love that you can kind of customize them if you get multiple. You can have a nice kind of pewter or gunmetal over a gold bottom, but you know I'm not going to do that. I want to get this pewter thing out of there and let's put gold back on gold because that's the only way to go. A really nice kind of secondary product to the overall Kickstarter, but it does claim that you can put 10 normal sized dice without the divider or, you know, they can fit in the divider regularly. I have a couple of gold metal 
dice and they are the same size as like a chess X set or typical sharp edge dice set and they fit in there just fine 10 also fit in there but if you're doing things like shell dice like these kind of uh, translucent ones that I've made in a video before those are going to be way too big the lid's not going to go on properly it's just not going to fit even without the divider it doesn't fit you have a height issue at that point and you do have to watch out some dice makers <laughs> myself included uh, make their d20 over large because they want the d20 to stand out for videos and pictures and stuff if they do do that it won't really fit in there well but most dice makers that make handmade dice like this dice bound set that I got they fit in there just fine because they don't over enlarge their d20s like some people do the magnets on the boxes are really strong I have no complaints on the boxes they also do sell coins and man do I love a solid gold coin it fills my dice dragon heart up the coins have a design on the front and a back which I thought was a really cool touch like the minotaur has a front and you can see the back of the minotaur I love that heads and tails is really easy to tell the difference on except for the crack the Kraken, I cannot tell the difference between the heads and the tails very easily, but it does look like a cool pirate coin. One thing some people may have a problem with is the coins are very obviously just reuses of the faces on the actual D6s. There's a slight slant to them. I don't have a problem with that because by the time I flip it, it's still going to be random. Some people may, but I don't know. It's up to personal preference, and I just wanted to show that off. I always like to show off cool tabletop or dice-related products. I do have a link in the description below for these, but full transparency... I do get a small commission if you order via my link, so if you think that buys my review, you can take that into consideration. However, I actually didn't know I was going to get that commission until after I had done the filming for my review. I mostly said yes to doing the video because I wanted the Kickstarter funded so that Sam would send me one of the normal gold dice in addition to these bright gold dice if it got funded, but I figured you should still know. I also thought this was funny. My Glamour Shot rotating table had a problem with the D6 because it would rotate on the bottom, and so the top would never actually spin while I was trying to do stuff. Anywho, I just think it's a neat product. I like the coins. I like that it's kind of a tabletop fidget spinner. I, again, you can't roll them. It's not really like dice, but I kind of turned them into Beyblades and that was fun. And honestly, they're just pretty. Pro tip for anybody trying to get me to review their Kickstarter, make your product entirely out of metal gold looking things. I'll be begging you to let me review it. Again, I'll put a link in the description below to the Kickstarter for those of you who are interested. They are surprisingly reasonably priced. I thought they were going to be a lot more than they are, and I always like seeing new dice related stuff that is new and unique. So of course I got to show that off. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below which color dice was your favorite and which dice face was your favorite out of all of these. Subscribe if you might want to see some more videos like this in the future or learn how to make your own dice or any other tabletop related content like the video if you like it dislike it if you dislike it i also want to hear that as well either way i hope that you have a fantastic day